Congratulate you on the successful completion of your tenure as a commissioner in the state of the virtues. We believe that leadership is responsibility and of course you have played your role significantly. In fact, it is very audible even to the deaf and obvious even to the blind. So I want to congratulate you once again. So on this particular program, we want to probably make a review of what has been done so far, particularly in your own uh, ministry. So the stateful scheme was one of the most impactful and laudable program of the outgoing government going by the regime. Of what impact do you think this particular program had on the economy, most especially the small and medium scale enterprise? Well, when you talk about the option food support scheme, it's a very laudable scheme that um, actually impacted a lot of lives in the state of Oshun. Uh, there is no way you talk about it without also looking at integration because when you look at it apart from the beneficiaries benefiting from this laudable scheme we have other sectors of the society that also benefited from it we had a lot of youths being engaged during this period um, those that were into gallery processing you would see that um, it's um, enormous because it gives an opportunity for the cassava grower to have his uh, products being, uh, being patronized. Uh, from the cassava grower, the transport that will trans transport the cassava itself to where they are processing is also benefiting from it. You also have the processors. The processor would also engage people that will assist in processing. And when it finishes, you also have the packaging. When the packaging finished, you also have those that are actually also supplying these goods to the state, which also requires transport. When we are distributing, we also, we also use transport. So you see how it has actually impacted different lives in so many different ways. And we are able to do this for 20 months. So when you look at that, you see that we have been able to um, actually impact um, 20 months and 30,000 uh, on a monthly basis will be around uh, 600,000 uh, vulnerable households in the state of Ocean. And that is quite enormous because when you talk about an household, you still have to talk about the father, the mother, a kid or two kids. So let's even say like an average of three or four people. When you multiply that with the 600,000, it's a civil bonus which out to the whole state. And when you're talking about social welfare, it is something that um, actually has its own impact. The United Nations itself uh, doubled um, the, their expenses on social welfare during this period. So now, when you talk about the Onja and the scheme, um, it's something that has actually impacted the state because the fund also stays within the state and the people benefit from this. And we were able to do like four or five different um, products. We were able to do gari, we were able to do rice, we were able to do semo, we were able to do wheat. So, and these were things that we shared within the training months to different people in the state. And uh, we made sure that we tried to cut across. Uh, we picked um, 10 different categories. Uh, we picked the Muslim community, the Christian community, the traditional worshippers. We also picked the artisans. Um, we picked those uh, people living with disabilities. We picked um, ethnic groups in the sense that um, Arusa Ibu, um, that were within the state also benefited from it. We also con consider youth organizations, we also consider student union body of each local government, while we also consider the, <coughs> the market women in Yalabja Babalaja. And all this was using the, the um, World Bank Social Register, which is the social register, in um, addressing these names. The records are there, the names of those that benefited are also available, and these are things that um, we, Mr. Governor, did as part of what is um, a part of what he wants to contribute to the state. Mr. Governor looked at it that well, if I'm actually doing a lot of infrastructure, paying salaries and also paying pensioners. What about the needy in the state? How do they also benefit from my government? And that came across and came up with this um, program called um, Washington Food Support Scheme, tagged on Jay Larry. 
Oh yes, sir. Thanks for that uh, wonderful insight. So I want to, I want you to probably talk about uh, how these vulnerabilities were gathered because being vulnerable in this society is not really relative. So how sure <coughs> that this uh, particular um, program gets to the target vulnerabilities? What we did was uh, the World Bank before we came on board did a. Um, a register which they themselves harvested to actually identify the vulnerables in the state. And they had their parameters which they use, and it's based on this um, register that we use in harvesting the names that were actually given these food items on a monthly basis. Secondly, we also looked at it that, you know, unless we don't want to be truthful to ourselves, there's no way when you go to a church that you will not see the needy among them or you go to a mosque that you don't see the needy among them so we also make sure we give the <coughs> christian association of nigeria on monthly basis in each local government the muslim community in each local government also to give the vulnerables among them we also consider the traditional worshippers we look at the accessions for other sectors of the society so as to ensure that this thing is in, in, in well spread and you know vulnerable does not have to do with age um, you can be in school, you may not be able to use. We consider the student union um, in each local government. We consider youth organizations which are doing that on a monthly basis. Yes, and in terms of regional integration, can you probably highlight some of your scorecards that you have done on that and successfully work? Uh, you know, when you talk about regional integration, you talk about how. Um, what are the things that connect all the southwestern states uh, to have the same ideology moving the southwestern states um, together? Part of what we've been able to achieve during this period was the issue is the issue of Amatekun. Amatekun is a is a is a project of the development agenda for Western Nigeria, which is done commission, and this has been facilitated by the Regional Integration Office, and this has actually come to stay and is actually being implemented. We also came up with other programs under the Ministry of uh, Regional Integration and Special Duties, which I believe any incoming government will see it very much as a very laudable program, which they should be able to continue with. We started the uh, Independence Day essay competition. The aim of this was to bring our students in the state together, to let them also show their talent and to also express themselves in terms of what they are capable of doing later in the future. And uh, with this, we were able to do it for three consecutive uh, years. And um, you, I'll be happy to see that um, so, um, some of them that have actually won this essay are actually doing us proud. Because after the essay, they've been able to develop themselves further and they've been able to win other things. So it's, it's also like an opportunity of um, talent hunt or catching them young. So this is one of the programs by that the Ministry of Regional Integration and Special Duties also anchored. We also um, do um, the Christmas, um, the um, end of the year celebration, which is the crossing over to the next year, which is to do the fireworks to also ensure the beautification of the town during Christmas period. These are projects that we made sure that within the resources we had, we were able to put, I mean, put the impact and to ensure that um, things were done according to the way it's meant to be. So these, among so many others, are um, projects being handled by the Ministry of Regional Integration and Special Duties, which we've been able to uh, put uh, impact in the life of people. Another program which we also commenced um, um, at the tail end is um, the Tojo and the Tojo which is targeting um, widows in our society because everybody has their role. How do we show our little contribution with the impact on what they are going to? It's just it's the essence of Mr. Government trying to say, uh, giving you a token on monthly basis to support whatever you are doing. We also consider the elder and the is 65 years and above. I will make sure that they, the ones that benefit from this are those that are not pensionable or they have other sources of income so that it would actually get to those that actually need it. And this was actually this was really appreciated by the widows in the state and um, um, I mean, a lot of prayers have been going on from Mr. Governor on all these little, I mean, all these uh, projects and uh, intervention he has been doing in the states. Uh, yes, sir. So, um, what status is the status of the state government of Washington? So, in line with mutual relationship with other states as part of the mandate of your ministry. So, how, do, how will you <coughs> describe the relationship with other states? 
<laughs> and we will see that um, the relationship of our state with our state has been very, very cordial. And that's why you see the understanding between Mr. Governor and the Governor of your state. As it relates to Lautech and also as it relates to Iwe by the road. You see that uh, that's why being from two different political parties, there has actually been a mutual understanding. And that's the vision of the regional integration, that's the vision of the Commission. How do we, in the South West, come together with the only more agenda of um, making the South West um, a region to beat in all ramifications? In what other areas was the ministry able to talk about? Citizens well, apart from the Toju Puro, Toju Agba, and also the Omja we are also doing, at the point in time, the um, Ministry of Youth and Sports, through other ministries, also um, provided new facilities for business owners to be able to um, um, start their business. Um, at that time, we had people that got 750,000, 1.5 for them to be able to do their business. And this actually really impacted the youths in the states because at that time, we, the target was for around 4,000 indigenous of the state that actually um, made and um, got these facilities and then um, they've been able to do a lot with it now. I personally uh, know so many of them that went into POS business, so many into rental business, and those businesses that we're talking about is what they're using to survive today. So you would uh, we agree me that um, um, so many programs were on, so many benefits were also on during the time of government. So, so it is known for uh, to be a credible uh, tourism site. What were your efforts to ensure that you promote this kind of tourism in the state during the region? Well, we know while serving as a commissioner for regional integration and special duties. I was also opportuned um, within the tail end to also supervise the Ministry of Culture and Tourism. And during this period, we were able to put a lot of things in place. Uh, God's willing, uh, through the support and guidance of Mr. Governor, and uh, because it's a support that, that is key, we were able to join the other states in the NAFAS uh, program in Lagos, where in our culture actors were able to display their strength. We also during this period, I also I did the tourism day, while we also joined other local governments in their uh, festival period. The Isheshe day was also done, where in, um, we have uh, people that also came in all the way from Brazil and United States of America for the Isheshe day in Mushroom. Uh, all other festival was also done during this period. So a lot of festivals came on board and we were able to showcase cultural heritage that we have in the state and we were able to also improve on it. Presently, uh, we, the state got a grant from a German firm uh, which we are developing three sites and made that on ground. And uh, I can confidently tell you now that um, these sites are actually ready and um, the those that facilitated it have also come around to come and inspect what they've seen of that and they've actually been very, very impressed. So um, in terms of um, culture and tourism, the state has really done well for itself and uh, Mr. Governor is now resting on his own to continue to improve on um, everything we met on ground and that is why you will see that uh, um, we've been able to achieve a lot of feet in that area. Yes, sir. Um, I, I, against the recent battle of awareness that happened in Aliku or the Union Job and some other parts of the state as regards to fire incidents, what effort was put in place to uh, foster the South Carolina situation as part of the mandate given to you over the government? Well, let me also thank God and also thank uh, uh, my governor, uh, Alaji Sekha for giving me the opportunity to serve in different many ways. While I was the Commissioner for Regional Education and Special Duties and also supervising the Ministry of Culture and Tourism, I was also opportunity to serve um, as the Supervisor, Ministry of Home Affairs. And during this period, I went, made sure I went around to see all the fire stations, met with the people on ground, 
listen to their challenges and listen to the problem they had and uh, to let them know that the government is there for them to solve these um, things for them and to actually address the simple ones that could easily be addressed and why we also look at um, other areas that we need to be addressed in the future. And you will see that despite all the fire break in the state, our main of fire service were always pumped to the rescue. They were always on time. And that's because they made sure that we provided everything that was required to make it a success and there was nothing lacking at any point in time. Um, and you, when the ember month, fire is something that we cannot actually have control over. But we would as much as possible to see how the damage can actually be reduced and uh, we have left we have been living up to our responsibilities in the for the fire people and uh, these are two part of the things that we've been able to do during the period we're in government we're able to make sure that um, um like i said we were prompt to any issues i had cases of people falling into war bringing them out Cases of fire outbreak having them having been able to reduce um, the damages which would have caused. I like the fire was one of the biggest ones because it actually took us a lot of time to um, to actually address it. And this was basically because one, the buildings were very very near each other. The materials they also kept in those buildings were also materials that were very flammable. However, you would also agree with me that that environment is also um, like a neighborhood where people live and uh, doing businesses and using that as warehouse with things that are also contrasting. However, we played our role to ensure that we try to reduce the damages as uh, best as we could. So in terms of uh, the Ministry of Home Affairs and uh, as we did so far, they've actually lived up to best possibility and I'm proud and uh, of our firemen, they've um, shown capacity, strength, and the zeal to exert what they are doing. Yes, uh, finally and conclusively, sir. So, how best can you describe the government of Governor Adebo Daifala in terms of how best we've been able to deliver a mandate on private general accountability of people and Finally, so in every uh, effort, the probability of private progress and early progressing was still in the path of progress or in progress and doing um, the future. Well, uh, I thank God for the time spent uh, during um, the government of Governor Adebe Gayetela. <coughs> I must say that um, I was privileged and I am honored uh, to have served with someone of that capacity financial intelligence, very prudent and very upright in all ramifications. Uh, Mr. Governor, even if you would, um, you would also agree with me uh, for someone to get an award from the World Bank in terms of prudency and managing the economy and increasing our um, IGL, you know that he actually came here to serve. It is based on that is um, notion and his way of life that all his cabinet members also followed in ensuring success in the government. Uh, Mr. Governor made sure that when you talk about infrastructures, you know, I can't even count often the number of routes that were done. But let me be just use Oshogo alone. The Aleko network route was something that was not there before. We have um, Barua also that is almost completed. We have Hallelujah. We have so many roads that were done while Mr. Governor was there. If you look at the look at the if I go to Ibadan today, it's so easy and so smooth. Um, the Ibadan road is there. You have the Ejibu road. I mean, um, he, he, he picked everything from different angles. If you look at the uh, Ilobu road also, I was going to Mumo Shore and going to Lawrence to catch a flight. I was even worried I was going to miss a flight. And I realized that it's just like one and a half hours now from Moshobo to to Lawrence. So you see that he has actually impacted our lives positively in a way that um, we would um, continue to talk about him, we will continue to miss him, and we will continue to see that um, someone came here and he actually changed the narration of the state. And when I talk about the narration of the state, I talk about positive impacts. Mr. Governor, during this period of time, 
Titi Bowie any money that we had up. There was no request from the House of Assembly that wanted to borrow money. And yet we were paying back debt accrued for the state. And yet Mr. Gordon was to do multiple projects. So you see that his financial acumen is I mean is one that even his colleagues are actually thinking they want to see how they can learn from him. Because um the governor of uh no state came here to the state as well. He is even really salaries. And that is by, by, by being part of the oil producing state. But this is Mr. Governor that is not in salary, he's paying pension on a monthly basis, and yet he's also doing a lot on infrastructure. When you look at infrastructure, look at health, there is no sector he has actually not putting all these efforts on, which um, it makes me very, very proud to have been opportune to serve under him and to see that so a visionary like leader like Mr. Governor is someone that one can always be proud of. The state is um, better equipped now. Um, the debt has been reduced. Um, there are better facilities now. And a lot of um, um, grants that Mr. Gomez had processed, you know, they are already on ground, I mean, for, to be utilized. This is because Mr. Gomez ensures that wherever there are opportunities, he makes sure he goes ahead for it. For example, you have like you grant or you have opportunities if you pass a budget early. You have opportunity if, you are, if your budget performance in relation to the actual is also above 90%. So these are targets Mr. Governor means ensures so that he can get an additional funds to do whatever he's doing. So these are the, it's, it requires a lot of thinking, it requires a lot of um, brainstorming and requires somebody with financial capacity to also be able to move the state forward from where Mr. Governor has recently uh, uh, set aside. Yes, we have progressed uh, politically. So I'm probably aware of that the uh, National, uh, National Association of Post-Technical Students gave you a recommendation for let me see, an acknowledgement award. So can you also highlight some of the acknowledgement and award that you have received in the last regime as part of the brilliant uh, performance by you? Well, I have uh, got a lot of awards from different sectors, being from the students in university and polytechnic, being from religious bodies, and being from different sectors of the society. Um, all I can just say is that I thank God for the recognition, and um, this gives me an opportunity to serve better. I have been able to make myself available. I have been able to show to the people that um, when you are given the youth opportunity, you have, they, they can actually also perform. And uh, while I was taking up my responsibilities, I ensured as much as possible I could carry everybody along. And uh, with the support of Mr. Governor, everywhere um, I went to, I was opportune in terms of being able to deliver. And um, this can also be a test from people that I've actually worked with, from the mini different ministry I've also worked. It has actually been a, um, something of, uh, of um, um, joy that I was given the opportunity to serve. And um, I mine is to see how I can give back to the people. And with every capacity that I have, I always continue to do that while I'm in government and while I'm also out of government. Thank you, Thank you very much.